greatest need is to be connected to the soil. The fish knows my greatest need is to be connected to the water. Man knows my greatest need to be, is to be connected with my creator. And I must find my way back, but the way has got the sword. So for years, men were looking for the way to get back, to get back, to get back, to get back. And that's where religions came out. Because man has, he knows inside of him, others will call it a higher power. Others will call it supreme power. Whatever power they will call it. It's a man crying inside of him. I need my source. I need the environment I was created to operate in. Which is the presence of God. Other people will try and if they don't understand creation, they will look at the moon and the sun and they see they are so big and say, maybe that is uh, my source. And they try to worship, but it doesn't fulfill. Doesn't work. It doesn't work because that's not the real environment. It's not the real source. Others will see the mountain is big and they worship the stone. Others will see the animal and they worship the animal. But still, it's not satisfied. Until the word became flesh. One of the us came down, became the flesh. He took flesh. He took a form of man, was made like man, so he can feel what man feels like, living without the presence of God. When he came, he did not shy away. He told the people, you have been looking for the way to the presence? I am the way. He told the people, I am the way. I am the truth. And he said, I am that life you are looking for. And he says, no man will go to the Father except through this way. I am the way to the tree of life. I am the way to the presence of God. When he died on the cross, God allowed him to experience how Adam felt in the beginning. To be separated from the presence of God. And in fact, when he was praying, say, if this cup can pass by. He was talking about the cup of separation from God. He was not saying, I don't want to go to the cross. What he was saying is, look, they can clap me. As long as you are with me, the clap can endure it. If they spit on me and you're with me, it's all right. But this cup of you leaving me, I don't, please, the, if there is another way, uh, please, let's talk about this. But not as I will, as you will. God said, no, I want you to experience what Adam felt. So he goes to the cross. And the father severed, separated himself with him. So that's it. Because he became sin. Not because he sinned. He became sin the same way that copper was made a serpent in the wilderness. That copper didn't sin. It was made a serpent. Christ was made a sin for us. We knew no sin. Became sin for us, the Bible says. And he says, when he's there and he's experiencing the separation, he says, Eloi. Hello, Lama Sabata. You know, other people translated it to mean, well, he's calling Elijah. Others say this and this. But he was saying, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? Why have you left me? He was back where Adam was when he separated from the presence. Now, I like this. For years, the presence of God was kept in a box inside a building called the tabernacle, later the temple. It has got the outer court, which has one degree of glory, the inner court or the holy place, another degree of glory, and the most holy place. That one, the degree of glory was high because in the box called the ark, 
at the top of that, they had carved cherubims after the heavenly cherubims. And the presence of God manifested in between those cherubims. It was a form of God. God was bigger than that light that appeared there. It's much bigger. He just stepped it down so that they can be able to handle it, that he's among them. And that's why when one man was trying to help the, the donkey cart as it was moving the ark, he looked into that. And that glory killed him because he was supposed not to look without the blood. The presence was kept there. When Jesus died, when he died on the cross, he said, Hello, hello, Lama Sabata. God, he came out of that box. The Bible says he tore the curtains when Jesus was crying like that at the cross. The curtains in the temple were being torn, not from top to bottom. I mean, not from bottom to top, because that will mean it's a person doing that. It was God coming out of that box saying, ha, ah, finally I can go and live in people. He tore it open from the holy place, went through from the most holy place, holy place, to the outer court, and then he came, he entered into the people. Finally, everyone who will say yes to Jesus Christ, Jesus will live in them and the presence will be back into them. Here is the problem when you don't have the presence of God. Because nothing can replace the presence of God, you will be dissatisfied in everything. The reason people are so dissatisfied and discontent, maybe I must move, I must go and stay here. It's, they think maybe staying there will fulfill me. They are trying to replace something that only the presence can replace. Only water can satisfy a fish, soil will satisfy the plant, nothing else. The presence of God will satisfy men and women, that being you and me. And that's why others, when the presence is not there in their lives, they think, maybe I must get married again, get married. So no, that one was too short. That one was too long. That one was like this. No, let me change. They change, change, change. Okay, maybe it's the car. I must, I must drive a big one, get a big one. I'm still not happy. You are not happy because you are not in the presence of God. And when you dwell with people, you will frustrate them because they will do everything you demand. You will still not be happy because it's not them that are supposed to fill this void. It's the presence of Almighty God. No wonder when a man has the presence of God, they are grateful for everything. So grateful. Sometimes people who are so discontent, they can't even understand. Why are you so grateful? We're supposed to get this and they say, well, when it comes, I'll be so thankful. But even without it, I'm complete. I'm not empty because I have the presence of God. It is the presence of God, brothers and sisters, that we need. It is the presence of God that we need. And when we receive Jesus, he sent the Holy Spirit to live in us and to bring that presence back to you and me. The first place is to receive Jesus Christ. That's the first place because he's the way to the presence. He's the way to the Father. After you have received him, you need to know how to cultivate the presence. That now refers to Christians. That is you and me on our everyday life. You see, that presence can be available in higher degree and lesser degree, higher and lesser. And you cultivate it. There are things that cultivate that presence. That's why when we start singing, I feel the presence of God. You feel the presence of God. You start singing, you feel the presence. You start praying, the presence is there. It starts to manifest. No wonder the Bible says, draw near unto me, I will draw near to you. Which means if you don't draw near to him, he is available everywhere, but he's not 
present or manifesting in your life. And that's why you feel like God has forsaken me. God will never forsake you. If you feel he has forsaken you, you have forsaken him. If you feel God is so far from me, it's because you are far from him. And he has made ways for us to get that presence to manifest. And that's why we come to church like this. Thank you. That's why we read the Bible on our own. That's why we pray. That's why we meditate on God's word. We are, we are cultivating the presence because this is the environment we live in. If we don't have this, even if we are Christians, we'll start to be grumpy, complaining, dissatisfied. Everything, nothing, everything, everything doesn't work. People could buy you spare. You even tell them, no, now I want wimpy. They come with wimpy, you say KFC. In one day, you get all of them, you say, I don't know what I want. You want the presence of God. That's what you must tell them. You want the presence of God. And you tell them, so how do you get it? The Bible says, be not drunk with wine. Why? Because part of drinking and smoking is because I am missing something. But you realize you can drink, you never get satisfied. You can smoke, never get satisfied. Let me smoke some more. Let me drink some more. Some more, some more. But it's not, it's like, it's like you are pouring water on a bottomless pit. Never full. Why? Let the presence of God replace that thing. That's why it says, be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. And he says, how do you get filled with the Spirit? He says, speaking to yourself in Psalms. As you start speaking to yourself in Psalms, the presence starts manifesting. And it says, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Speaking to yourself, singing, doing this. Then as you do that, you are cultivating that presence, which will help you and maintain you as a Christian. I conclude now. Moses, in the text where we read, he's in that place. God talks to him face to face. And that face to face was also a step down face to face encounter because later on when he says, let me see your glory, God says, <laughs> You want to see my face, you will not see me and die. But in the same chapter, he says, he talked to him face to face like to a friend. What face was God having there? It was a step down face. What uh, Moses was asking for was the higher grade. He says, I want, you to see, I want to see you in your, in your glory, in your form. He said, boy, you can't see me. But I'll come, I'll just pass by, you'll see on the back. But if you see my face, you will, you will bend to crisp. So he says, but the Lord, ah, you say we must go. You didn't tell me who's going to come with you. He said, I'll come with you. My presence will go with you. Which means the presence of God is God himself. That's what we're looking for. That's the water and the soil we're looking for. Please stand up on your feet. That's the presence of God. Oh, the